Hello, I am Flash Isaac. This is Flash Ninas. You are now watching 120 Days to Jam. This is a series containing 120 videos to prepare you for jam. Each episode of the series contains introduction, outline, detailed class, questions, and homework for you. The questions and homework are from the Flash Learners Jam application. Install Flash Learners Jam app today to access all the free features. Click activate and scroll to buy activation key to get access to the golden features. Don't be scared, the app is affordable. Do you have trust issues? Simply chat me directly on Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Telegram for installation and activation instruction. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to take off. This is episode 3 of the 120 Days to Jam Chemistry with Flash Isaac. In episode 2, we are able to discuss matter, pure substances and impure substances, test for purity, elements, compounds, and mixtures. In this episode, we shall be looking at chemical versus physical changes. Matter undergo changes. The changes that matter undergo is divided into physical changes and chemical changes. When you look at change of state of matter, when matter in solid state goes to liquid state we say that is melting matter can change from that liquid state to gaseous state we call that evaporation matter can change from that gaseous state to liquid state when you allow it to condense so change of state of matter from gaseous state to liquid state is called condensation using water as example as you boil water, put your hand on top. You notice that the water vapor in your hand condenses and changes to liquid. Matter can change from solid state, solid, directly to gaseous state. In that case, we say that it has sublime. Iodine, ammonium chloride, camphor, these are examples of substances that are sublime. When you put camphor in your clothes, after a while, they all vanish. But your clothes don't get wet or stained, so it has changed from solid state to gaseous state. Matter can change from gaseous state directly to solid state without passing through the liquid state. That is referred to as deposition. In very cold region, you see water vapor, gases, they splash on the window. They solidify immediately from the vapor to liquid solid directly. It is a physical change when no new substance is formed. No new substance is formed. The example I gave, when you boil water, it turns to vapor, or you put water in your freezer, it turns to ice block. It still remains water. The identity remains. Identity doesn't change, right? So, in that case, it is a physical change. No new substance is formed. But in chemical change, new substances are formed. Let's look at burning of firewood. When you burn firewood or a log, it changes to, you see ash, you see uh, carbon fiber that is given off, then you see uh, water. When you burn in the presence of oxygen, carbon fiber and water are usually given off, then the log or the firewood changes to ash. A new substance has been formed. New substance has been formed. For chemical changes, they are not easily reversible. You cannot change the ash, carbon dioxide, and water back to firewood or back to the way it was. You see? So a new substance is formed. There is a change in chemical properties of the matter and physical property. So for chemical changes, there is change in chemical property. There is change in physical property. But for physical changes, there may be change or no change in physical properties. For example, wood, as example, you break them down into timber, you slice. As you slice the wood, it may have been different from how it was. 
physically or color because you broke with it now, you scratched it. The identity of the material, it is still wood. So that is physical and chemical changes. Now let's quickly rush through these differences. In physical changes, no effects on chemical bonds, which means there is no chemical reaction, there is no change in chemical identity. And for chemical changes, there is effects on the bonds in the molecules. So the bond is broken, it requires chemical reaction, chemical identity of the material is affected. Physical properties may or may not change. Physical properties change. Little heat change and no change in mass is involved in physical properties. In physical changes, rather, there is just a little heat or just a little heat change and no change in mass. But for chemical property, since it involves heat, heat must be there or light or sound or bubble. There must be effect to make that change to happen. So it requires large amount of heat for that change to occur. And there is change in mass. Change in mass. When you cut a uh, wood into smaller parts or your water gets frozen, the mass remains the same. Change in mass. It, uh, mass is the same. But for chemical changes, the mass entirely is different. Examples of physical changes. Melting and ice. Breaking a bottle. Boiling of water. Aluminium foil is cut in half, melting of butter. You see, all these things, change takes place, but no new substance is formed and they are easily reversible. If you melt an ice, you can freeze it back. If a bottle breaks, you can melt them. If you boil water, you can condense the water back to liquid. Aluminium foil is cut in half, you can put them together. Melting of butter, you can solidify them back. So for physical changes, generally, they are reversible. In few cases, they are not, but generally, they are reversible. But chemical changes, they are not easily reversible at all. Burning of food, souring of milk, mixing of acid and base, you form salt and water. Then, um, digesting of food, rusting of iron, when you light a match start to cook, when you fry an egg, all these are chemical changes. Large amount of heat is required or bubbles are formed, sand may be given off, then they are not easily re reversible like the physical changes. So, physical versus chemical changes treated. In the next episode, we shall be taking a look at separation techniques and their principles like filtration, evaporation, sublimation, crystallization, separating funnel, and so on. These are the secretion techniques Jam expects you to know, as well as the principle which they operate. The questions for this class are from the Flash Nana Jam application. The first question here says, a difference between chemical and physical change is that in a chemical change, a difference between chemical and physical change is that in a chemical change, a new substance is formed. That is correct enough. This question says, which of the following is a physical change? Physical change. Option A, burning kerosene. You ask yourself, burning of kerosene, is large amount of heat required? Is it easily reversible? When you burn kerosene, it's burning. In the presence of oxygen, of course, then bah, maybe CO2, water, and so on form. However, it is not easily reversible and a new substance is formed. This is a chemical change. Exposing white phosphorus to air. Phosphorus is very reactive. When you expose it to air, it will catch fire. So therefore, that is a chemical change. Option C, freezing and ice. When, generally, freezing, melting, evaporation, boiling, when you hear those terms, they usually tell us that the change is a physical change. Freezing and ice is a physical change. And option D, dissolving calcium in water. When you dissolve calcium in water, there is a chemical reaction. It reacts to form new substance. So, uh, the, uh, the clear example of physical change here is freezing ice cream. Option C, 
is the correct option. And for your homework, open the Flash Tenders application, uh, click on question search, and type physical changes. Attempt question 1, 2, 4, and question 6. If you have questions, reach me on my social handles. Episode 4 focuses on the various separation techniques and principles. Enjoy.